Hello, welcome to this video about Blender 2.63. Uh, here we'll go over some of the Blender basics, how to configure the user interface, some user preferences that you might like to have a go with, and how to navigate around uh, your 3D scene. So this will be something like the scene that greets you when you first start Blender. On the splash screen are some links for the uh, manual and the Blender website and that sort of thing. Uh, but there's also an option over here on the right to change the default key mapping for people coming from Maya or so. I'd suggest trying to uh, use the, the Blender defaults if possible. I click anywhere to get rid of the splash screen. Let's take a look around the main window. Here's the 3D viewport uh, where you'll be doing most of the work. With the default objects we have here are the infamous default cube. Uh, we have a lamp over here and the, uh, the, the camera. We use right click to select these objects and the A key on the keyboard will deselect everything if you have a selection uh, or if nothing is selected it'll select all the objects. The 3D view uh, and some of the other editors have panels which can be revealed or hidden on the side of the view using the N and T keys. Uh, so the 3D view has a tool panel over on the left hand side which is operated with the T key. And a properties panel over on the right hand side which works using the N key. There are also these little tabs with a cross in them um, which can work the panels just like that and they can be also collapsed um, in if you just drag the border and push them in um, like that. Now this whole interface is actually a set of smaller editors which have been split into the main window. I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment. However the, uh, the windows we have over here um, by default are the uh, outliner here where you can see all the objects in your scene and uh, you can also select them there um, with a left click. Below that is the properties editor where you'll find settings for rendering, how the world should look and uh, materials and uh, modifiers which belong to the selected object. Along the bottom then is the timeline. This is used for animation and physics simulations and here you can see play, stop, rewind, all, all the usual stuff there. At the top of the screen is a small thin window called the info window and here you'll find the file menu with the usual suspects inside and this is also one way to reach the user preferences which we'll go over in a, in a little while. In the info window you can choose from uh, various preset layouts uh, also and so if you wanted to be doing some video editing say you could choose the video editing layout here and a quick way to change between these is to use control and the left and right arrows um, to choose them there. We'll just go back to the to the default layout. Now each of these editors can be changed into any other type of editor by using the button on the far left hand side uh, of the header. Now headers um, can actually reside at the bottom or the top of the screen. So for example the, the header of the 3D view here is, is on the bottom. And we can use uh, we can right click on the header and choose flip to top if we like, or using the key F5 by with uh, hovering over the window will also allow you to, uh, to, to, to flip those. So for example the outliner here we could change it into a 3D view just like the main, uh, the main window there or we could change it into something like a UV uh, image editor here if you wanted to have a picture for, uh, for reference purposes or something like that it's up to you. So I'll just change this back into the outliner so it's fairly common to uh, split the 3D view into two. So sometimes we might have, say, both of both. If we wanted to have a front view and say a left-hand side view, we could do that. So we use these echelons in the corner of the screen and just drag across in order to split the view. If we want to split in the other direction, we can just hold and drag down in that direction, and we can create as many views uh, of these as as we like. To combine them then, we drag the echelons back um, back across into the nearest window or if you wanted to join in the other direction, you just drag first one way um, and then drag down um, into the, in, in the other direction. One can also right click the borders and choose split area here and um, you can also right click and choose join area and that, uh, that, that gives you the same sort of result there. So to move around the 3D scene then, using the middle mouse you can rotate the view. Shift in the middle mouse will allow panning and the scroll wheel there um, will be zooming in and out. 
You can also achieve um, uh, zooming by holding down Control Shift and using the middle mouse um, and moving the mouse sort of up and down, just like that. If you lose track of your object uh, in the scene, you can press the numpad decimal in order to focus on the selected object. And this will uh, re also recenter the point at which the, um, the scene is rotating around. Um, if, if, it's, if, if your scene is not rotating around um, the selected object, then you can just you can press numpad decimal to, to make that happen. The number pad also allows us to view the object from, say, front view with number pad 1, a side view or right-hand side view with number pad 3, and the top view with number pad 7. Uh, control numpad 1 would show you the uh, back uh, view, control numpad 3 is the left hand side view as opposed to the right hand side view and, uh, and, and, and number pad, control numpad 7 is the, uh, the bottom view there. Number pad 5 will allow you to switch between orthographic and perspective views. You can see up on the top left corner, front perspective, we press number pad 5, we'll go into an orthographic view, and it's fairly common to use the, um, the orthographic view when modelling so that perspective uh, isn't, isn't taken into account. On to the user preferences then. If we, we can press Control or U to get the user preferences up, or as I say, you can find it in the file menu. Now, there's a couple of few things that I would change here um, by default. I've loaded the factory uh, settings um, in order to begin this video. So the first one I might have a look at is the rotate around selection option here in the interface. Um, now, if I just make a if I left click over here and just go shift A because I need a couple of couple of few more more objects here and uh, maybe I can shift D and duplicate the cube somewhere I'll just make a few of these just like that so wrote at the moment the um, the scene kind of rotates along um, it's supposed to rotate along the, the like the origin of the scene um, occasionally it won't and if you are zooming in on say an object here and you find that it's not rotating um, exactly how you want. You can press the number pad decimal point to change this, the, the rotation of the scene there or in the, if you select the rotate around selection option in the user preferences then that will happen kind of automatically. So you can see if I now select the, um, the, the sphere over here how the, the, the view rotates along um, around that. Um, my personal preference, um, rather than rotate around selection, is to have auto depth on, and this works a little bit differently. Um, so, how will I demonstrate that? Um, without auto depth on, and without rotate around selection on, um, as I say, you can't really control it very well unless you press the number pad period, and number pad decimal. Auto depth will take the depth of the object underneath the mouse cursor um, as the rotation point. So without actually selecting any, anything here, if I have my cursor over the, uh, the sphere here, you can see how we're rotating around that object. And similarly, if I choose now this object over here, um, that's, you can see how that's working. Um, Okay, zoom to mouse position is another one that I'd like to turn on, so I'm going to select that now. That's pretty self-explanatory. It means if you, um, wherever you have the mouse, is where the view will zoom to. So I, I found that I find that fairly, fairly useful. Um, so those are the ones that I would change in here. I mean, it's up to you, uh, your personal preference, really, what you'd like to do. In the editing panel then, the only option that I would change here is the perhaps the release confirms um, here. Now this works if we um, perform what we call a tweak operation on the object, and that is to say if I hold down the right mouse button and drag a few pixels, it'll actually pick, pick the object up or the vertex up if you're in edit mode. And now we need to press the left mouse in order to confirm uh, where it gets placed. So with release confirms on, I can tweak the, um, the object and keeping right mouse held down, then if I release it, it'll, um, it, that confirms it, hence the name release confirms. So if I was to be in edit mode on this object, I know we haven't, we haven't covered um, the different modes of the 3D view yet, but suffice to say that the, um, 
different modes that a 3D view can be in are down at the bottom here on, on the left hand side and you can also switch between object mode and edit mode um, using the tab key so object mode is where you manipulate objects uh, kind of as a whole and edit mode is where you uh, manipulate the, the mesh belonging to the object um, so tweak mode over here with the um, with the release confirm set you can see how I could um, simply push and pull vertices fairly easily the normal method for doing this would be to uh, select a vertex and press G to grab and then left click but I mean if you were doing a lot of this then you could just um, you can use this release confirms option there so that's all I would change in the editing section the input section is where you can turn on your emulate three button mouse if you don't have the three button mouse um, and one option I would change in here is um, to have this continuous grab on um, uh, so in order to demonstrate that if I just turn it off quickly if I go out of um, edit mode and select this object here if I was to press S to scale it um, and hold down shift to move um, in smaller increments you'll see that when the cursor reaches the side of the screen um, it stops and I'd have to repeat the operation with um, continuous grab enabled I can scale hold down shift and the mouse cursor will leave one side of the screen um, and enter in the other so you don't need to stop um, in order to perform operations like that so I would, I would have that on um, emulate number pad is there so if you don't have the um, the number pad 1, 3 and 7 keys to change into your front left and top views you can select that the other one is the orbit style here um, turntable by the default is not what I'm used to you'll see if I grab um, say the top right hand side of the screen and rotate you can see how the scene is kind of rotating um, about the horizontal I suppose you'd call it whereas with um, trackball enabled the, seat, the, the the view will actually roll and you can't do that with the uh, trackball but it's, um, it's up to you, it's personal preference which you're used to I personally am used to the uh, trackball so I'm going, to, I'm going to have that selected um, I think that is about all. The add-on section um, is where you can enable and disable add-ons. Now I've enabled the screencast keys here so that you can see um, what I'm pressing in the, in the 3D view on the left hand side then. Um, I won't cover these in this video, suffice to say that's where they are and that's uh, where you can enable them and stuff. So my suggestion um, would be is because um, well, after you've set your preferences you'd want to set the uh, press the save as default button here so that you get your preferences each time you start blender um, the only issue with pressing this is it also says that it saves the scene as we have it right now so my suggestion is then to set your preferences and save as default from a new scene or load the factory settings and then set them up um, so that you get your you get the default scene each time or at least make sure you have the scene set up how you'd like it to be um, each time okay um, hopefully that gives you a reasonable introduction to blender my aim is to cover manipulating objects more in depth in the next video so for now that's all thanks for watching I'll see you next time